I don't know where the video cut off on me at, but uh, <clears throat> when you're trying to build wealth, you can't you, know, you can't be spending all your money on a, you know twenty thousand dollars on a razor or uh, you know six to seven thousand dollars on a four wheeler. You, you just can't you can't be doing that. You've got to choose between those things. Also, if you're trying to build wealth, you're not going to have time to go do those things. A $60,000 boat may sound great, and getting out on the weekends with your wife and kids and enjoying life may sound great. <clears throat> but you've got to have the asset that pays for that first. If you don't have the asset that pays for that, you're having to work and spend time to pay for that. And then, when you're working and spending time to pay for that, you have no money for assets. You need to try out his cash flow game. It is a great game. Um, Robert Kiyosaki's cash flow game has taught me so much. Uh, I use it for trading the, 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 the twins. We played it all the time. I have yet been able to get my oldest kids to play it. I don't know why they won't play it. They won't play it. And that does bother me some. Because if they would play it. Oh, hang on there. If they would play it they would really, really change their perspective on life. Um, because you're not going to find a perfect job out there. You're not going to find a job, unless you work for yourself and you're doing something that you really love, you're not going to find a perfect job out there working for someone else. Well, you may find something that you enjoy, but after a while, it's going to rub you the wrong way. No, it does me. See more tree limbs down from that storm we had yesterday. But I noticed it's going to uh, it's going to work on you. It's going to eat at you. I know it does me anyway. No matter how much money you make, it's just the fact that if they come in and they say, "Oh." You've got to work over today because you know so and so didn't come in, or you know we're you know you just got to work over because you don't have enough seniority, so you've got to stay and work over. It doesn't matter that you know you have to pick up your child, or you have to pick up your grandson, or that you have other obligations outside of there because they really don't care. They don't care about your obligations. They don't care about things that you have to do. The only thing they care about is, you know, you being their slave. That's bad to say, but that's pretty much the way it is. And life happens. Things come up. People get sick. They can't go to work. So somebody's got to fill that position. People get sick have to take time off work for weeks or months like me right now I'm, I'm hurt I hurt my knee I actually probably hurt my knee in October but they treated my ankle and not my knee and now I'm off work again because of my knee my knee didn't get the proper treatment I have a torn meniscus so they're going to, have to go in there and repair all that I'm waiting for surgery and You know, I'm not getting any workers compensation or anything like that but that's another reason why you've got to save your money uh, if you read the book and I've read it many times oh I can't think of the name of it right now the Babylon book uh, the richest man in Babylon he says save 10% you know it'll bring you wealth 
you know, beyond your wildest dreams. 10% will not bring you wealth beyond your wildest dreams in today's times. You've got to save as much as you can. As much as you can. You cannot just save a little bit. You've got to stack that cash. You've got to save that money. Like Sauce says on value payment. Sauce talks money. It's a great show to listen to. Great show to watch. You gotta save that money. So if you're in a situation like I am, I've got a little bit of um, accidental insurance. Pays just a little bit of money, not even enough to cover your living expenses. It doesn't even cover groceries. So you've got to have enough money and savings to get through times when you may be out of work, having all kinds of doctor's expenses, where you have to, uh, you know, pay everything yourself out of pocket. And if you was to go get another job, your other employer may kick you to the curb, and you're not going to find a job somewhere else paying what you're making now. It's a catch-22. So you better have enough money saved back and put back to cover those expenses. Because you never know what's going to happen to you. But I guarantee you one thing, life's going to happen. And it's going to hit you hard. And I don't wish that on nobody. And I'm not complaining because I'm happy. I'm, I'm taken care of. You know, I have a holding company. I have other things going on. <clears throat> but the thing is, that's the reason why building wealth is so important. Because life does happen. You never know. You may go to work one day and they might just fire you. How are you going to take care of your family if you don't have substantial savings? If you don't have assets bringing in money? Like Robert Kiyosaki teaches. If you don't have that working in your favor, what's going to happen to your family? What, how are you going to take care of your loved ones? You know, the Lord requires us to provide for our families, take care of them. He says, He who does not provide for his own is worse than an infidel. I believe that. He says, A good man leaves an inheritance unto his children and his children's children. I believe that as well. So you gotta you gotta take care of your family. Because trust me, in this damn time, if you ain't gonna provide for them, somebody else will. So that was the number one thing when it comes to building wealth. Save that money. And what's Robert Kiyosaki say? He says, buy that assets. Buy those assets. Sauce talks money. What's he say? Save that money. So what do you do? You save that money. You get a job. You save that money. And before you start buying, you got to pay yourself first, right? Everybody says, pay yourself first. Pay yourself first. Except for Dave Ramsey. He says, get out of debt. Get out of debt. No debt. No debt. Well, if you're going to have anything, you got to have a credit score got to have a credit score oh just pay cash for it well i'm sorry dave not everybody out there has a hundred million dollar year uh radio contract or whatever it is that you've got with clear channel radio not everybody's that fortunate uh did you work for it yeah you worked for it i'll give you that but not everybody can just pay for Oh, we bought this building with cash. We paid $12 million for it. Not everybody can do that. Normal, regular people have got to have a credit score. You've got to be able to know how to use debt properly. You don't want to use debt, you don't want to use debt to buy motels, duplexes. And I don't even know about that right now. Airbnb is going to crush that industry. And the rental industry, the 
government's trying to stop you. The government's trying to crush you. It sucks. It sucks when the government's out to get you. When the government's shutting down your businesses and telling landlords they can't evict people who won't pay for who won't pay to live with your property, but yet you're left holding the bag. And I guarantee the, the coverage you're getting from the from the government, you know, is not gonna pay your mortgage while they're letting people sit there and freeload on you. I don't know if I discussed on here or on the podcast the other day, but there was somebody who we know who hadn't received rent on one of their properties since 2020, and they couldn't even get them out of there. They could not kick these people out. It's crazy times. Crazy, crazy times. government is your own worst enemy oh yeah they're not coming through and shooting us yet yet or hurting us all in FEMA camps what do you think they're going to do though after they destroy our independence and see that and without a without your own business without your own way of making money you have no independence that's why when you get a job it's so important to keep your bad debt as low as you can and to get in there and buy assets as much as you can you may say oh I can't go out and buy you know I don't have ten thousand dollars or twenty to put down on a multi-family home and I don't know if you'd want to right now or not but you've got to buy stuff that brings in an income that's why I go back to dividend stocks that's why I like monthly paying dividend stocks I am almost liquidated every position that's a quarterly dividend right now I had several um, I had Bayer and some others once again this is not financial this may be end up being a new video, different video. So, uh, once again, this is not financial information or advice. This is just education, entertainment purposes only. But I got an opportunity to get out a lot of my quarterly payment paying dividends, and even my yearly paying dividends. I got out of them, such as Bayer, a lot of those positions that I held for so long. I. I I just moved totally away from that stuff when I got in a good position where I was making some money on them. I got out of them in the holding company and I moved towards monthly payers. And the reason for that is the cash flow. I want that I want to be able to have that cash flowing in and have the op, the you know the flexibility not to sell that asset if I need to you know I'd rather have the cash flow coming from it and not have to sell that asset unless it's just an emergency or I have a better opportunity to move you know the money in that position to a different position <clears throat> and a lot of people say keep 30 percent 20 to 30 percent of your portfolio in liquidation I have more cash, I am almost uh, 75% cash, counting uh, Bitcoin and stuff like that. I, uh, I'm almost 75% of the company is in cash because I was preparing for another market crash. But if this, but if our market follows the Caracas market, I'm going to be getting. I'm going to be taking it down to about 30%, 20-30%. And the reason for that is because if we're heading into hyperinflation, you want every dollar working for you as hard as it can possibly work. And if it's just sitting there not doing nothing, you're just losing buying power. Lumber is going up daily. 
steel is going up daily. When it's going, uh, gas, I don't know what's going on with oil and gas. Uh, I've not been real able to get a good grasp on that. The area I'm in, everything's trucked in because it's got to be popped in, then trucked in. So I'm not real, gas prices fluctuate daily around here. You never know what you're going to be paying in gas prices. But that is why it's so, so important, like Dave Ramsey says, to have an emergency fund. You got to have that emergency fund. Uh, not a rainy day fund, but an emergency fund. Don't touch that. You don't touch that to invest in or anything else. Yeah, it's depreciating, but you've got to have that cushion there. Grocery prices are increasing. They said, uh, they, they're saying 5%. I don't believe that. I don't believe that for one minute because you may be buying the same thing. The cereal box may be the same. But if you look inside, there's a lot less cereal in there. You're seeing stuff like shrinkage. Your bag of chips isn't full anymore. Same size bag. It's just got a lot more air in it. Cereal's the same way. They have come back and just totally resized candy bars. I've not had a candy bar in a, long, in a while. I said a long time, but in a while. Because, like I said, I am 300 pounds. And I'm trying to get this weight off of me. But. You'll see the size of candy bars just like be trimmed way down. A whole lot smaller than uh, what they used to be. Nothing compared to the size they used to be. just part of it and you're going to see a lot more as the economy as the velocity of money will increase hyperinflation will increase and cost of living and everything's going to increase but you're still going to have some fixed rates that's why they say again the real estate during time like that because your mortgage is not going to inflate so, if I was hitting hyperinflation times and I was trying to turn all my money into, turn all my money into, if I was trying to turn all my money into other things, into assets, I would try to use debt and not be paying cash for everything because I would want that debt there because that mortgage would be a fixed rate, be a fixed cost. And you can take that, so like Dave Ramsey, I'll pay $12 million for this building. You can control a whole lot more real estate with that $12 million with debt than what you could control with having it paid in full. So that's one reason why you want to do that. You don't want to have, you want to make it grow as fast. It's, you can expand and grow your wealth a whole lot easier with many buildings than what you could with uh, one building. I mean, it's not expandable, it's not duplicatable. Patrick Bed David said on that video I talked about the other day, I left links in that description for the other video from the other day, how you need to, how you need to buy things that are non-duplicatable. I know I just said that that real estate's duplicatable, but it's what I mean is you can expand it. 
He's talking about things that's non-duplicatable like gold, real estate. You can expand, but they ain't making no more land unless you're China or Japan building islands. So, that's another thing. Who knows what's going to happen? But I sure feel sorry for people that's drowning in super huge bad debt situations. $900 car payments. Having 20, 30,000 tied up in a, a toy. 60 or 70 or even more thousand dollars tied up in a boat. That's just costing them money, not making them anything. On a good note is, here's another thing that's a sign of hyperinflation is coming. You gotta watch out for this. They said the other day this is the first time in like ever that I know of, but there may be a time out there that's been like this before, that you can take a car that you bought two years ago, a used car, and take it back to the dealership where you bought it and get more money today than what you bought it for. Did you hear that? Usually when you drive an asset, when you drive a car, a car's not an asset, I'm sorry. When you drive a liability off the, the, the parking lot, off the dealership lot, you've lost five, ten, twenty thousand dollars right there. You're never getting that back. But now, it's one of the first times in history where you can literally buy a car and leave with it and come back and sell that car for more money back to them. What's that tell you? It tells you hyperinflation's coming. It's scary times out there. Anyway, back to the podcast. Uh, like I said, we got guy coming on next couple weeks uh, discussing how to build long term wealth in the timber and lumber industries excuse me we also have uh, some real estate people coming in zoning expert coming in all within the next little bit uh, please be patient thanks for supporting us please like hit the like button on this video super important to grow it Please hit subscribe. We will, uh, as we get more uh, into this and learn more about it, we're just starting out. So we hope to bring a lot of value. Hope to really help a lot of people out. Um, so as we go along, we just hope to really grow, really get some better content out. We thank you while we're, for uh, supporting us while we do this. Also on the podcast, we're also listener supported now. Uh, we're, we've gotten the, to the point where we can be listener supported, so a small donation, you know, to help us get more uh, better names on, uh, more people uh, discussing more aspects of wealth. We need to get some insurance people on, just get some uh, different ones on, some mortgage brokers, some bankers, and stuff on. Uh, my wife, she's a, a an annuity person. We'll try to get her on discussing annuities and retirement plans. Um, we'll just try to get some, uh, try to get as many people on, many guests on as, as we can in the next few months. I'll leave a link below where you can reach us on Facebook and Instagram. Maybe you'd like to come on the show, or maybe you'd like to come on and uh, uh, leave some comments below. You know. I'm not right about everything. I learn stuff every day. And stuff I learned yesterday that I thought was right, I learned today that, you know, may not be so right. So, we're about learning from everybody and putting together the best thing that works for each individual. And what works for me may not work for someone else, and what works for someone else may not work for me. Warren Buffett talks all the time about how you can take your stocks to the bank and and get a loan against them. I went and tried to take some of my stocks to the bank and get a loan on them 
and he didn't laugh at me because he didn't want to be rude, but he's like, where did you hear that at? I said, well, Warren Buffett talks about it all the time. Well, I can't find a bank that's going to give me a loan for some of my stock certificates. But anyway, <laughs> you know, things that work for some people don't work for other people is what I'm saying. Not every, not every shoe fits. So, if you have anything to comment on, please comment below. Please help our community grow. Let's all learn together. Uh, let's not try to let's not be rude to one another. But let's learn. To, let's learn from each other and help each other out. That way, we all grow together. Because I'm telling you, it's not about me winning and you losing. Because there could be a time very soon where we're all losing. And I don't want that. I don't want us all to win. I want to win. I want to see you all win. Remember, please subscribe. Please subscribe to the podcast. I'll leave a link down below. We appreciate all your support. Appreciate you listening to us. And if you'd like to be on this podcast, your wealth plan podcast, please, uh, join us on follow us on Facebook or Instagram and then uh, hit us up you never know maybe we can get, get you on the air thanks again hope you all have a great weekend I'm excited they're saying the market's going to be down tomorrow morning we'll see what happens maybe a lot of stuff on sale y'all have a great weekend thank you God bless you